Hey, and welcome to today's jazz guitar lesson in which I'm gonna show you the chord changes to one of the essential swing standards to know, Stomping at the Savoy. We're gonna tackle this song like this. Firstly, I'll run through the form, then I'll show you a basic version of the chord changes, and then show you some cool subs, very similar to what's used in the Ella, Fitzgerald, and Louis Armstrong version. I'll then break down the harmony and go through what's going on with the chords, because this one is in everyone's favorite key, D flat major. Before we dive into it, please check the description for a link to the resources from today's lesson. You can get PDFs of both the chord shapes and my chart from today's lesson. Now you'll also find a link to my Patreon page where Stomping at the Savoy is the standard of the month and there's plenty of resources over there to help you really do a deep dive with this tune with me. Stomping at the Savoy was written in 1934 by Edgar Sampson, a saxophonist, composer and arranger. Now he wrote this tune for the Chuck Webb big band uh, who used to play at the Savoy Ballroom in Harlem, hence the name of the tune. Form-wise, it's very straightforward. It's A, A, B, A, 32 bars in total, each section being eight bars. So very typical of the time. And for my basic version of the changes, you're gonna need the following chords. D flat six, nine. D flat nine. D diminished seventh. E flat minor seven. E seven. F minor seven. F seven. E string now, G flat seven. G seven. Keep moving this shape up. A flat seven. And A seven. B flat minor seven. B seven. And finally, C seven. So that's our chord shapes, let's run through the A section. So we start out on D flat six, nine, and we've got one and a half bars of that. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, then three, four. On beats three and four of that second bar, we're changing to A flat seven. So one, two, three, four, one, two, A flat seven, back to D flat six, nine. Again, one and a half bars, and the last two beats of line one, we're gonna, on beats three and four, we're gonna play D flat, sorry, D diminished seventh. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Leading us into the second line, and the first A section ends with E flat minor seven for a bar, A flat seven for a bar, and then we got a turnaround here. Two beats of D flat six nine, two beats of B flat minor seven, two beats of E flat minor seven, two beats of A flat seven. So that's first A section. In the second A section, all we're gonna do is change the last two bars. So you see here I've got a first time bar, these two bars end the first A section, and you've got the second time bar here, these two bars end the second A section. So at the end of this A section, A2, we're gonna go just a bar of D flat six nine to D flat nine. So the second A would go D flat, A flat, D flat six nine, D diminish, D flat minor seven, A seven, and then jump to the second time bar, D flat six nine, D flat nine. Now I love the B section on this one, it's quite quirky, here it is. Funny thing about this B section, it just uses dominant chords. And we start out on G flat seven for half a bar, so go one, two, then up a semitone to G seven for beats three and four, and then a whole bar of G flat seven. Then we're gonna do the same thing, but from a B seven, go one, two, up a semitone to C seven, three, four, back to B seven. Same thing, but with E seven. Up, semitone to F7 and back down. And then we change here to a bar of A7, then down a semitone to a bar of A flat seven. So that would sound like this. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one. Whole bar of A flat. 
flat, A7, sorry, then A flat 7. And the final eight is the same as the first one, so like this. D flat 6, 9 to A flat 7, D flat 6, 9 to D diminished to E minor, flat minor 7, A flat 7, then the turnaround. D flat 6, 9, B flat minor 7, E flat minor 7, A flat 7. Piecing that all together and playing it once through a few, and we have this. One, two, a oh, one, two, three, four. Like any other standard, this song's had many, many interpretations over the years. And one of my favourite versions is the Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong version. And they mess with the changes a little bit on the A section, which creates a little bit more movement and interest. So I put together a second way that I would often like to play this tune. Now, the A section's inspired by what Ella and Louis do. And the B section, as you'll see, I'm using a lot more extensions. It's quite common to use. 13ths and 9th chords in that B section rather than just plain old dominant 7ths. I really like these alternate changes for the A section, there's a lot more movement and it's maybe more fun to play and a bit more fun to solo over too. And it goes like this, the harmonic rhythm is two beats for each chord. So we start on D flat 6 9, moving up to E flat minor 7, then up to F minor 7 and back down to E flat minor 7. So two bars we go in D flat 6 9 G flat 7 I love the sound of that when that comes in F minus 7 B flat 7 so so far that's and then this next line is the same as the way I showed you earlier so E flat minus 7 A flat 7 then a turn around do it again Second time, D flat 6 9 to D flat 9. As for the B section, it's quite common here for people to use 13th chords or 9th chords here instead of just plain dominant 7th. Although the, the dominant 7th does the job fine, it's just this makes it a bit richer. So we're going to go G flat 13 to G 13, back down to G flat 13, then B 13, C 13, B 13. Now instead of going to E13, F13, which we could do, you could do. I appreciate if you haven't got a cutaway, that might be tricky. So instead I've gone E9, F9, E9, and I hope you agree everything sounds a bit richer. A flat seven as normal. Sorry, A7 then, A flat seven as normal. So it's like this. the A section. Now at the top of the lesson I said this one's in D flat major so before we break down the harmony let's think about what that means. So if we took a D flat major scale, D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, C and D flat we harmonize that into seventh chords, we'd get the following seven chords. D flat major seven chord one, E flat major seven chord two, F minor seven chord three, G flat major seven would be chord four, A flat seven chord five, chord six, relative minor, B flat minor seven, chord seven, C minor seven flat five, and I need to play D flat major seven again to hear that resolve. 
So those are our seven chords. Now one thing you'll notice is in that song we didn't use major sevens uh, for the for the D flat chord. We used six nine. Now that is very common of the time. In the swing era, it's much more common to use sixth chords or six nine chords than major seven chords for the one chord, or sometimes even just a plain old D flat triad. Here's the A section on the screen to explain the colors. Blue denotes diatonic chords, chords in key, so from the key of D flat, and anything red is out of key, so borrowed out of key chords. So we start out D flat six nine, starting out on chord one. That's a you know a very common thing. Most songs do that, but it's something to learn to listen to and hear for. The first thing I do when I'm listening to a song is like, where's chord one? Is it this or is it? Am I waiting to hear it? And we got a bar and a half of that. So chord one, chord five, the dominant leading you back to one, and then this is a leading chord here as well out of key as well, D diminished, and I've called it the flat two diminished because it sits between chord one, D flat major, and chord two, E flat minor, so flat two, it's D's below E flat. And why does this lead us to E flat minor, chord two? It's because this D diminished, if you analyze the notes, you got D, A flat, B, and F, that if I added a B flat to it, in the bass, that would be B flat seven flat nine. So this diminished chord is, is like the sound of B flat seven flat nine, and B flat seven happens to be the dominant of E flat minor. So it, it leads you there like a dominant chord. And then we land on chord two, E flat minor seven. Two often goes to the five as it does here. Five likes to lead us to one. And then there's a turnaround here. One, six, two, Five, which would ping us back to the beginning, we go again, chord one, five, one, flat two diminished to lead us up to D e flat minor, and then the second time we end with chord one, and then we turn chord one into a dominant chord. I've voiced it as a, a nine, but it's still a dominant chord behaving like that, and we call that a one seven chord, so where you you're turning chord one into a dominant chord, and you'd often do that because of where that chord can lead you. And there you've got to think, well, what key is D flat seven the dominant of? It's going to be the five chord in one key, and it's going to be the five chord in the key of G flat. Lo and behold, the B section starts with a G flat chord, so it leads us perfectly into that B section. Now here's the B section on the screen, you'll notice it's all red by one chord. Uh, so this really just cycles through different keys, and it moves in fourths. So we're starting out in G flat major, chord one, voiced as a dominant, so a very bluesy feel. Um, and then the kind of connection, I suppose, with the A section, if you imagine if you had a blues in the key of D flat, maybe not the greatest key for a blues, but let's say you did, chord four would be G flat. So, so essentially, it's a bit like the way a blues goes to chord four, because if you think back, chord four in this key is G flat major. But we've got it voiced as a, a dominant seventh here, and, and really for me it feels like we're in G flat temporarily here. So chord one is a dominant, and then going up a semitone, so we call this a flat two seven chord, back to chord one. And then referencing, you know, the idea of the circle of fourths, we would then move a fourth to B. And then move up a semitone, so now B is like, where we are. We move up a semitone to C7, that would be the flat 2 7 in B, back to chord 1 as a dominant, B7. Move a fourth again to E. I'm gonna go E, go up a semitone, so now E is the important chord, the one chord. Up a semitone to the flat 2 7, back to E7, chord 1, and then moving a fourth again to A7, and then going down a semitone to A flat seven, which helps us get back home to D flat major because that's the dominant chord in that key. Now I realize that I referenced some theory moving in force might be something you're aware of, might be not, but if you reference the circle of fifths and go counterclockwise, you'll see there, which I'll circle, you've got G flat, F sharp, and then we move a fourth to B, then we move to E, and then we got that A, so it keeps cycling in force like that, uh, eventually working our way to A, and then going down a semitone to A flat seven to get back home. So it really shifts through the gears there, shifts through the keys in that B section very temporarily in G flat, then in B, and then in E, and then 
you know, always at the end of a B section, it's always about getting home so you can do another A section in this kind of song. The final A section is exactly the same as the first. I'll put it on the screen just, just so you can see, but it, there's no different to how I analyzed the first A section. Now it's the first of the month and over on my Patreon page that means all of the materials for the standard of the month stopping at Savoy have been uploaded. And over there if you want to check it out there is a chord melody arrangement, there is a comping study, there is a beginner and intermediate solo amongst many other things. Link in the description. Now one of the things about if you're going to play a song like this then you want to make sure your swing rhythm is in order that you can comp it in the right way. So if that's not something you've addressed with your playing I'll put that video up on the screen. If you've not yet subscribed then please consider doing so. I make videos like this, put them out every Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in, leave any comments, any questions below. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed today's lesson. Just leaves me to say until next time you take care.